Today on Dub World, we're replacing beetle running boards. You're going to need just a few tools, 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter wrench, and a 13 millimeter wrench. Get the tools you're most comfortable with and let's get ready to go. Crunchy running boards. Crunchy running boards. So I ordered in a new pair of running boards, galvanized heavy duty running boards from CIP1. When I received them, they were defective, as you can see here in this video. We had issues with the mounting on one end, and then there was a problem with the retaining strip on the side of the running board. Now, this strip runs from one end to the other and helps hold the rubber mat onto the running board. As you can see here, it's pretty thick. It almost looks like it was designed to replicate the chrome trim on the side of the running board, but there is no provision for the trim. This strip went from being very wide on one end to very thin on the other. I decided to return them, but CIP1 had me destroy them and they credited me back, so I was very happy with that. I decided to just go with a pair of used running boards from a friend. So here's the used running board. And if you look closely, you'll see what appears to be bumps on the running board. Well, those bumps are actually little spots of surface rust that are forming underneath the rubber mat. This is something that will happen eventually to all running boards if the car is left out in the weather. If you look underneath here, you'll see there's no rust through on the bottom. So we know it's just in the beginning stages. The running boards I took off, as you saw earlier, were really bad. This is not bad at all, so what I decided to do is simply peel back the mat, clean the rust, treat it, paint it, and put it back together. So I'll show you now here, it's relatively easy. All you have to do is simply grab the edge right here, just peel it from away uh, along the running board, flip it back, and then you'll expose uh, the rust that's underneath. You can see those little spots there. That's what's creating the bumps. So I've opened up the rubber mat, as you can see, and it's hanging here on the edge, totally exposing the running board and the little spots of surface rust that have formed. As you can see here, I've already started taking a wire brush to some of it, uh, those clean areas you see. You can use a wire brush, you can use sandpaper, a grinder, whatever you want to use to get this off. Obviously, you want to get as much of it off as you can, and as you can see, there's a lot of it down here on the edge and on the rubber itself. Just do your best, get it clean, uh, treat it, or if you have paint or a coating that can go right over rust after you remove most of it, you'll want to use that. Just make sure you wear a mask so you're not breathing in all that rust dust as you're going about. But once you get it treated and you get it painted, then you'll be able to simply put it back together and have a running board that's probably going to last for several more years. This one is kind of a mid-grade running board. Not the best, not the worst, but it's decent for what I'm building here in this car. Well, as you can see here, the running board is missing from the vehicle. It's kind of grungy in here, but the running board was so rusty, it literally crumbled coming off the car. What I want to show you here is sometimes these bolts may be rusted solid or very difficult to remove. I have this handy little 10 millimeter swivel wrench that I love to use. But in this case, this bolt here was really stubborn. I've doused it with PB blaster. And what I do is I just put the wrench on and I work it very gently. Make sure I can feel it actually moving. Um, I'll put the wrench on, try to move it little by little. If it starts moving, I know I got a good thing going. I'll spray some more penetrating oil in there and I'll just move it slightly back and forth, back and forth, ever so slightly. And as it moves a little bit more, I'll go back a little bit more and so on and so forth until eventually I'll be able to get the bolt out. But this is something you may encounter in your job. So I've gone ahead and I've cleaned up the heater channel mounting area. And in doing so, I've exposed a few areas where the bolts go that had some surface rust. 
So I've decided to clean up everything, treat it, and then do some touch-up paint. There's also a couple little spots underneath the edge of the door there, and I'm going to take care of those as well. But as you can see here, you want to make sure you get this treated. That way you avoid any uh, compounding of rust in the future. And you can see up front too, there's a little bit uh, of surface rust there. But we'll go ahead and take care of that, and we'll move forward with the running board from there. Just showing you here a little area where I have treated the rust. The chemical that goes on turns the rust black once it's dry, and then you know it's ready to paint. So I'll put the touch-up paint on, let it dry, and then I'll be able to reinstall the running board shortly after. One important step is to make sure that your new hardware installs correctly. You want to make sure that these bolts thread in and out without any problems. Once you do that, add a little Never Seize compound to make sure that removing them in the future is easy. Well, we're back and our touch of paint is all dry and we are ready to install the running board. Now, if you have a helper with this, it'll make things a little easier, but it's not necessary. You simply just need to take the running board and start by attaching it to the front fender, then back towards the back, and then the heater channel. What I do when I'm installing them is I'll simply lift the board up, kind of rest it on the back jack point, and then I'll bolt the front fender bolt in lightly right up here, and then I'll move to the back. I'll go more into that in a second. And here's an underside view of the loosely mounted fender bolt. And as you can see here, the area of the running board that mounts to the heater channel is lined up perfectly. And this is why your fender bolts need to be loose. You have to make sure that all of the holes for the running boards that mount to the heater channel are lined up properly. Once you get those lined up properly, then you're going to install the bolts for the heater channel. As you can see here, it's loose, but the board is pushed all the way down. And we'll get into more about the positioning of the board here in just a second. Just wanted to point out something real quick. The rubber washer that comes with the running board kit goes between your fender and the running board itself. Now, just for display purposes, I've got the bolt sticking up above the running board, but I wanted to let you know that when I bolt these on, I make sure the bolt for the front is facing towards the back and the back is facing the front. Okay, back up top here, if you look, you'll see one of the heater channel bolts that I've threaded through loosely. You're going to want to make sure that your running board is positioned all the way down before you start tightening things up. You can see here I'm pushing on it to make sure it's all the way down. Once you're sure that it's all the way down and it's not blocking the jack point or hitting the door, you can go ahead and start tightening things up. After you get all your bolts tightened, you want to make sure you don't have any problems with the clearance from the door. And as you can see here, everything's perfect. And also, if you look back to the jack point, we're nice and clear there. So I started by bolting the heater channel tight, just nice and snug, and then moved on to the fender bolts. Fender bolts, you can do a lot tighter. You don't want to over torque things because you can break bolts, especially at the heater channel. And here's the finished product. Thank you for watching today, and I'm going to leave you with some photographs that were taken of the entire process just to give you a little behind the scenes view of what we didn't have on video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. I hope to do more videos, not only parts and repairs, but also upcoming VW events. Thank you again, stay safe and have a great time working on your Volkswagen.